What's up, everyone? This is Diana Rose. Welcome to my channel. This is a review and commentary for Love and Marriage Huntsville. We are discussing unaired footage along with the episode Not About to Kiki and Ha Ha, Season 6B, Episode 22. And I am doing it with my sister and co host, okay, Miss Clone. What up, yo? How you doing? <laughs> what up? What up, girl? Okay, look, y'all. Y'all know how we do it over here. Number one, uh, we always give an uh, honorary uh, mention to uh, one of the one of the players on the show, uh, and my sister typically wears it. I'm wearing one as well, but we're going to start with my sister. So tell me uh, who your Avi is today, and then the reason why. Uh, this is uh, Tisha's cousin Courtney. Um, she was an uh, integral part of the um, the first scene at the picnic. And um, the reason why is because she was kind of the voice of reason at the table between Tisha and Marceau and the discussion that they were having um, about Kiki. She was the one that was trying to put it all into perspective. Um, she was the one that was constantly playing devil's advocate with them. And she was the one that was really correcting Marceau to make sure that he knew that it was a serious topic and um, let him know that he shouldn't, you know, make it, you know, such a lighthearted humor. Yeah. He was putting too much jokes around it. All the yeah. Time. He and yeah, and Courtney was the one who was like, this isn't funny. If she was, if you did truly believe that this was going on with her, then why are you making these jokes? This isn't funny. And so um, she is, Courtney is your uh, Abby for today. My Abby is Ace, okay? Uh, that is little baby Ace, the baby of Tiffany and Lewis Whitlow. And I am using Ace is my happy because I was not prepared to come on camera. But also, I like that when Ace got to the table with all of those crazy people, he went to sleep, child. He was like, I'm going to be oblivious to the BS. I am not listening to this. Okay. And I loved it. He said, mm -hmm. his mom will wake him up when he gets home. Okay. Mm. He's a beautiful baby. <laughs> he is so cute. Um, but yeah, so that was that. Um, what else do I want to say to you guys? Um, I, um, let's start with. Mm, how do you rate the show clone? I'm still going in high. Um, this, this one, uh, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to stick with like a nine. I'm going to give it a 9.25. I'll give it nine and a quarter. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was still highly emotional. Um, I thought it was very well done though, but it was highly emotional. There was a lot going on in this episode. Um, and it was just, it was, it, it, I could see how it could be triggering for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought they did a really good job with, with not only um, shooting the scene, but like breaking up the monotony, um, so that you know, with like Kimmy's truck and whatnot. So. Right. I agree with you. Okay. I'm rating it high as well. I'm going to do a nine and a half. Um, and I, I shared some of this on my last review um, for episode 21. This one was episode 22. <clears throat> but you and I come from a big family, right? Like our mother mm -hmm. is huge. Mm -hmm. So what we saw at the table was very similar to things that we saw growing up, right? And right. I was even sometimes worse. But mm -hmm. when people would, you know, we'd have picnics or something, sometimes shit would pop off. You know, part of my friends, but sometimes things would pop off. And um, if that person was leaving, you know, or left, um, there was a group of family members or people that sat around and literally dissect, dissected them from the moment they walked in the door to the time they left. And sometimes the conversation or the subject matter could be very serious. Um, sometimes it could be very petty, um, but it was that that's just what happened. And so for me, I, I didn't get as triggered as some people did, even though I respect everyone's opinions and that, you know, it, it's, everything isn't for everybody. Everything isn't for everybody. Agreed. But I will say, um, in regards to making fun of people on drugs, uh, that's very commonplace 
in our community. Um, we make fun of things that are hard sometimes. It's just is what we've always done to get through some things. We carry a lot of burden. So we will make fun of things. There's nobody on the planet who can't say they haven't heard 50, 11 jokes about Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston or, you know, whomever. Um, every comedian has told these jokes at nauseum. So that is, that's normal fare for us. Okay. And, um, you know, and it's not just us either. Let me, let me just also say, um, I bring this up as an example a lot. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, one of the richest cast on reality TV. Kim Richards has admitted, has gone on talk shows and said that she's gone into rehab for addiction, that she was on something. There was a scene, I wish I could tell you the episode and and whatnot, but you guys can Google it. It is a scene where her and her sister Kyle go into, they go to visit someone's home. I, I might have been Brandy, but there's a new cast member. Her name was Brandy. She sees Kim come into the house one way with one personality and within seconds asked to go to the bathroom. A couple of times she went to the bathroom and every time she came out of that bathroom, she came with a different personality. And Brandy literally calls it out in the scene and said, you're on something, you're doing drugs. And there's a whole fight that goes on where people are being threatened physically, all kinds of stuff. But, um, you know, like I said, if you watch that show, um, which is on right now, I think the first episode uh, for this season aired Wednesday, I believe. If you watch that show, um, you would have saw the journey that Kim took season after season after season on that stuff, okay? <laughs> on that stuff mm -hmm. and um, how her personality was changing and how the, the cast dealt with it because she was allowed to come in and film and be high. There was actually a scene where people didn't know if she was okay. They climbed through a window. They were banging on the door trying to get her out of there. She had like delayed something that was on a cast trip. So you know how they have activities and stuff. They delayed the activities because they couldn't get into the room to get her. And production was like, we're about to call the front desk to open the door. And her sister Kyle was like, no, no, don't call the front desk. And she jumped the balcony, like I think they had rooms that were cl to close to each other. She jumped from her balcony to her sister's balcony and broke into the door um, to get to her sister because she didn't know what was going to be found in there. So she wanted to see first. So just so you guys know, um, that subject matter was way heavier than what we talked about, what we're about to talk about. But I did want to just set a scene. That's it. Just set a scene to say that it doesn't just happen with us. <laughs> um, and sometimes we watch ourselves on TV and it can be hard for some, not for me, for some though. Um, Colm, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? No, I think, I think you're, I think you're on point. I mean, I think you, <clears throat> you explained it pretty well. And I, I think, I think it was a, it was a really good way to set it up because I did watch your live last night and it did seem like a lot of people were, um, uh, they had, they definitely had differing opinions. So, yeah. and the opinions were great. I, mm -hmm. I, They're I, perfect. I'll bring those opinions to the table because people need to understand we're not a monolith. We all feel differently and it's okay. If you guys missed that live, please check it out. This is a picture for it, the thumbnail. And it says live open panel, not about to kiki and haha. -ha. Um, but let's get into these behind the scenes. Let's keep this show moving right now. Okay. Um, we had two, unaired uh, scenes, I call them behind the scenes, but really it was unaired scenes between um, Melody, Kiki, and Amin. And then there was another one with the fellas, Martel, Courtney, and Chris Fletcher, okay? Let's talk about this one first. So y'all know this was a tough scene at the end of the show. A lot of people had things to say about Melody. Um, you know, asking Kiki if she'd take a drug test. She said, girl, I got one in the car. Like she picked it up special uh, to bring on the way. Um, but the way the scene is set up is just, I think, maybe four minutes of the of the episode. So the last four minutes or so. And it felt like it went from A to Z real quick. But they dropped the unaired footage 
And if you guys, again, if you need to see this scene, you can catch it on my IG. It'll probably be there until like nine or 10 tomorrow morning, Eastern time, or you can check it in my Facebook group. You can join that if you're not a member. It is Diana Rose Real Talk, and it'll be there for a while, okay? But um, in the unaired footage, you get to hear a whole different conversation between the three of these people. They are really, um, you know, sharing some moments between each other. And then you can tell that it's a situation where they are, they're bonding on things, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. So just to give you guys an idea of what it, what's being said, it didn't just jump from A to B like, hey girl, you, you know, could have handled yourself differently. That's how Melody explains it to her. Uh, that's the scene we do see at the end. You could have handled yourself differently. Um, throwing the drink was wrong. You have to admit that. And if I mean watch Keek or watch Tisha do the same to you, he probably would have done the same that Marceau did. That's what we see. And then we see her say, basically, well, why don't we prove everyone wrong? Do the drug test. But in the unaired footage, they're doing more conversation where you get to hear um, Melody say, listen, you know, Kiki, or, excuse me, Tisha, that's who Tisha is. Like she does not, you know, they, 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 they sit on pedestals, basically. Uh, the three of them were talking about how they sit on pedestals and throw stones at everybody. They sit by, in glass houses and throw stones um, at everybody. They act like they haven't gone through anything. And we all know that being human means that you're going to have a life of ups and downs, period. Uh, right. Everybody may get... <clears throat> have a situation where you're addicted to something, at least not, you know, everybody has something that's a vice for them, period. Mm -hmm. Whether it's shopping or eating too much or enjoying a, a, a favorite dessert, sometimes things can go up higher levels, no mm -hmm. doubt, okay? Um, but life is highs and lows always. If you're breathing air, that's the wave. You, you're going to go up and down. That is it. Right. Um, so I respect the show for that. But Melody and Kiki and Amin basically have a conversation where they're saying they act like they don't remember their lows and they may still be living some lows right now. And Melody said, let's talk about some of the lows. Right. And he was like, she was like, give us some examples. He said, oh, I mean, said, I don't know, maybe like a. Uh, Maybe like insurance fraud and scamming, you know what I'm saying? And then you hear like Kiki in the back say, preach, preacher, preach. Okay. He, she was like, what are some of the other lows that you might've heard about? And he said, oh, I don't know, like a pornography addiction. Uh, give us another low that you might've heard about. Oh, uh, you might be a, somebody might have been an expert at boosting and taught their child how to boost. Okay. Mm -hmm. So knowing that they had that moment and then you know getting to the kiki let's prove them wrong part it felt it, it it changes the the tone of it just a little bit right okay right exactly and i i'm going to tell you how i saw it mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. and i'm just going to throw this out there this is my opinion and i'm allowed to have it so <laughs> <laughs> so what if, what if there was a behind the scenes discussion and mm -hmm. they said, we're going to put this out there, but we're going to, we're going to approach her and we're going to talk to her about this thing. And we're going to ask her to, we're going to ask the drug tester because you know what, we're a reality TV show and everything is going to be on camera. And what if Mel said, nah, if anybody's going to do it, I'm going to do it. Like if, if this has to be done, I'm going to take the wheel here and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to be the one to address it with her. I, I'm not having you guys do that. Mm -hmm. What what if that was the case? And in, 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 in other words, it was going to get done anyway. Someone was going to approach her and say, you got to get drug tested. Who, who would we rather see do that? Mm -hmm. Carlos, uh <laughs> another producer. You know what? You're right. And Tita. That's that's why I brought up the yeah. of Beverly Hills. That's why I brought up, did I say Jocelyn and, and, and um, and, uh, what's his name? CBJ. Did I bring them up? No. If y'all don't remember Jocelyn and CBJ producers pulled them aside and on camera, it was Mona Scott and another producer said to them, are you high right now? Are you on something? Listen, I'm telling you, this isn't the first to this isn't the first time it ever happened, and this isn't even the worst. This was mild compared to 
other shows and how their addictions played out before screen. And Kiki is saying, I used to be on it. I am no longer. She has a support of her family and friends who are saying, we don't see that. It's Marceau and Tisha, and maybe even Kimmy and Maurice, who is suggesting a different narrative, right? But it's cool that right. she has family and friends who are saying, we believe you, girl. That's not true. Okay. So sorry right. about that, cloner. No, so so one other thing I wanted to bring up. Let's just say that this job was a nine to five, and it is, mm -hmm. right? The, the, this is a nine to five for these folks, oh, right? They are characters on a show playing themselves it's, it's sometimes. A, hold on. it's We can say nine to five, but really they get, what, seven to 10 filming days out of a quarter? So not that big of a deal. Yeah. Right. But mm -hmm. let's just say that it was a nine to five. Let's just say it was an office. You're going into it. It's a nine to five. And let's just say you have two coworkers that are very, very close to one another or even family. Mm -hmm. And one throws a drink on the other. What do you think would happen with that coworker? What was the reprimand? Yes. You tell me what's the reprimand. They typically are walked out. Mm-hmm. Right. That's you're 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 basically assaulting someone. So they're walked out. So at this point, that drug test was coming. No matter who came up to her and said it, oh. I think the most respectful person they could have had do the job was the person that they had do the job. And that was Mel. OK, that's interesting. OK, girl. So you're saying that you think that um, these conversations were being had. Like mm -hmm should just go on ahead and, and give her a test and mm -hmm. then he said I'll do it yep okay all right that's okay. my thought that's your thought my thought is I'm not sure how I feel about it I feel like um I, I you know guys know that I've watched this since season one um we saw Mel take a break from getting involved in the other people's business, other storylines. We saw her take a break for about two and a half seasons, two and a half seasons, like literally two years. She was just like, I'm done with this. Um, and I think that now we are seeing her get back involved. I don't necessarily think that it is too far fetched for Melody to have asked that question. Um, we've, I've seen her ask really hard questions of Tisha about Marceau and, you know, made serious comments like, girl, go on, get up to the bar at three in the morning, put, make sure them kids have a babysitter. Like that might feel harsh to a lot of people. A lot of people from who watched it season one used to make points like males in people's business. She should stop. Da -da 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 -da. It didn't bother me because I'm OK with where they are on the show and watching the show. But I think it's kind of on par. I don't necessarily think it's it's not her. I just think that she took a break so that she can deal with her own life. And now she is back in the swing of things with the show. And I think that she feels like, you know, she was at the table. She listened to the conversations. We'll talk about her participation in those conversations in just a bit. And now she's back in it. But I like the scene and I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that there was more to it. Mm -hmm. um, and that it's, you know, edited for our entertainment. I know a lot of people are probably, why didn't they put it in the scene so that we could see the full context? Because it's an hour show. They really isn't even an hour. It's 37 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. The rest of it is commercials. And they, yep, they got to pay the bills. Exactly. They got to pay it. Okay. And then the last unedited scene, let's get this one up real quick. This is Martel, um, Chris Fletcher, and Courtney. That's Stormy Still's husband. They're at the gym. I guess they're doing this bonding moment. Um, this In this particular unedited footage, they bring up that Melody threw a glass at Chris Fletcher's house, throwing it at Martel. We were making jokes about it yesterday on the live saying it was a family heirloom. Like that was, that was Cresta. Okay. Probably, you know, passed down from, from Nell's mama or something. Um, but she threw that glass when Martel made the comment, um, you weren't taking care of me. That's why I got into the situation in the first place. People aren't robots. As much as we'd like to sit in our seats and, you know, do uh, drink our water and act like everything is good, sometimes it's it's the moment. It, it mm -hmm. Also, there is some showmanship in reality TV. You have to have some showmanship, period. Um, but she throws a glass. Martel's in this scene, and he says he was just saying words and that it should not have bo bothered Melody at all. Like, she had no reason to do anything to me. I didn't physically touch her. 
What kind of BS response is that? What type of comment? Chris Fletcher says, but what did you say to her? And he's, he's trying to get him to acknowledge and to hold himself accountable. As a man, you, you went pretty low. Um, and not only did you go low, look at the results, sir. Like even now you're still doing low shit. Um, and he said there may, Martel may never acknowledge this, but Martel in the scene makes that particular comment. He also says what he did to Melody was five years ago. Like he doesn't have a, <laughs> like he doesn't have a, another child with a social security number that calls him daddy. Um, and that was a little freaky Friday. And that child's not five, right? That child is not five. I believe that child might be two, might be three. The, the fact that he went back five years ago and skipped over the rest of it lets us know where he is in his head. He still, he claims he's not ashamed of it, but he never acknowledges it where him and Melody are concerned. He, did, he didn't acknowledge it. He, when he said, and what I did wasn't even that bad. Uh -huh. And I thought, man, you act like you just took the last hamburger out of the skillet. Yes. I am confused on why we're not acting as if you didn't get another woman pregnant while you were married to your wife who was also pregnant. And, and, and had just had that baby. Yeah. Honestly, well, I think when she had her baby, um, I think when her baby turned one, the other one delivered. So yeah, listen, the fact that he pretends that never happened shows that he needs, he should be in deep intensive therapy, like seriously. But he had the nerve to say that out loud on the camera so that it could forever um, have that moment. You know what I'm saying? That'll forever be there. Right. And then the other thing he said, what else did he say that was crazy? Oh, he said, Melody... If you guys could only see that when we're not filming and we're not all together in, in these moments of filming, she talks to me. She's like, she'll say hi. She's like cordial. We're, we're, it's like, it reminds me of old times. And I went, he's really unhealthy. He's probably, he is unhealthy, healthy. Listen, this man took her to court. When they went to court, they had to go to counseling. Melody had to get her ass out of counseling. And in order to do that, she had to show that she could be cordial. Okay. So she showed that. And then when she is around him and her kids, she also shows herself cordial as the courts have asked her to do. But she doesn't have to be cordial to you outside of that, sir. You need to go to hell is what you need exactly. to do. She is being cordial out of respect for her children. She wants her children to have good memories of their parents. And how they and how they interacted with one another. Those are all family experiences that you're creating. Facts. That doesn't mean that she has to be nice to you when she's in she any you, other situation. When she sees you at the supermarket, asshole. The fact that he is so dumb that he doesn't know that, and I'm sorry, that's dumb. That's dumb that he would say it. It's dumb that he would say it out loud to other people. And it's hilarious that um, Owen dropped it like, okay, let's put this one out here so people can see how absolutely ridiculous he is. Come mm. on, man. Yeah, he's a seventh grader. There's there's a lot of seventh grade moments in this in this um in this particular episode as well. But this was this reminded me of yeah, he's he's got a very young mind if that's if that's what he got out of his 13 year marriage. Yeah. Facts. 100%. The fact that he didn't even know her enough, 13 years of marriage, you don't know what you're experiencing right now, sir. God dog. Oh, what? Oh, oh. I got to wash my mouth because of my little, I got a little ace as the Abby. So anywho, let's get to this uh, show. <laughs> so we're going to pick up where we left off. Um, and that is at the party, right? Mm -hmm. um, he is uh, being asked to leave the house. They're at Kiki. They're at um, Tisha. Excuse me, Tisha. Jog on. They're at Kimmy and Maurice's house. Uh, Maurice, for whatever reason, can't put that cigar. I take can't put that cigar on the ground or something. Um, and he's letting Kimmy do all the dirty work. But Kimmy is trying to push Kiki out. Um, we have Jalen also um, pointing in the direction, telling her to leave. It got really ugly, but. Kiki was hurt. Yeah. They were both hurt. 
They were both hurt. I they said, were both hurt. Tisha was hurt. Kiki was hurt. Facts. I said last week that Kiki was hurt. I told y'all how I felt, and she pretty much said everything I said in this episode. And the, at the end, she said it. I would have never given her that much energy if I didn't care. So bottom line is, I, that was how it came across to me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so she gets her outside. She gets her around the front, excuse me, around the front of the house. And Melody and Stormy walks with her to the front, her and Amin. And um, Mel says, listen, what happened? Did she put did she put her hands on you? Like what was said, what was done to make you go off like that? Because Mel's like, I looked up and I just saw mm -hmm. a what? reaction that came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I saw a reaction that came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And it literally makes her look crazy. Because uh, for us, for at least for me as the audience member, I was like, I felt like she was being a little provoked. It felt antagonizing. I'll tell y'all a little bit more about what I meant to support my my opinion here, but it's my opinion. But she said, um, she didn't put her hands on she, on you, did she? And she said, no, but I'm tired of the bullshit. I've been, she, you've been putting me through this for a long time now. And I don't appreciate it. I don't respect it. It's, a, it's, a, it's too much. Um, and Mel was like, well, this got, this got to hurt you. I'm sure it hurts your husband because Martel and your husband are frat brothers. And, um, I mean, said, listen, I ain't even about all that. I'm tired of his BS. And right where I stand right now, I'm ready to put them paws on him. Right. Exactly. So it got bad, but Kiki was actually teary eyed in the scene. Um, and it did show that she was hurt. She was hurt that she had walked into this house and literally in, into the space where she really didn't know what was coming for her. That was my opinion. I didn't think she knew what was coming for her. I think that she came in kind of expecting something to happen, but she let her guard down. Mm -hmm. Marceau greeted her warmly. What's up? Hola, Kiki Amin. Dapped up Amin. Um, she's hugging Jalen. She hugged Kimmy, who later said she could feel her shaking when they mm -hmm. hugged. You could feel her shaking when she when you hug and you know that they're not all on good terms. But Kimmy said, I didn't realize y'all were even that bad. I thought y'all were good. I would have never invited her if I would have known she was going to come in here and pop off. They act like she showed up with a razor blade in her purse ready to kill. OK, and that's mm -hmm. not what happened. It's not what happened, in my opinion. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Then we get the kitchen scene where Tisha is trying to clean herself off, but she kept her clothes on. She kept the, the, the stain on the shirt. She was like, I, I'm barely wearing a shirt anyway, but they're there. And this is where you hear Tisha say, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I was sitting there and they walked over and I hugged Amin because, you know, I really love Amin. He's a good guy. I love him. But when Kiki bent down to hug me. I said, excuse me. That's it. I just said, excuse me. And I walked off and nothing else happened after that. And then the next thing I know, I'm getting water to the face. Oh, that's a lie. I'm sorry. That's a lie. Yeah. yeah. Then, it was a, it, you're right. It was a blatant, it was a blatant lie in my opinion as well. Especially when Kimmy asked the question. Now, look, had I known that there was something between y'all, that we would have never, ever had them come here. Did mm -hmm. you guys tell, what's that man's name? Maurice. Did you guys tell Maurice that there was something going on? This was very telling for me. I mm -hmm. picked up on something here. Did you guys tell Maurice what was going on? Oh, no, no. And that that's when she goes into the spiel that you just gave, right? Mm -hmm. That was very telling. One, you you just lied to Kimmy. She point blank asked you, was there something going on before, before you guys got here? Is there something else going on that you guys have not told us about? And she said, no. Mm -hmm. 100. That's very telling. 100. When That's very telling because you wouldn't lie about it. But hold on. The reason why it's very telling is because when Kiki walks in, we know Kiki is apprehensive and People are trying to make her comfortable about being there. But Tisha tenses all the way up at the table, starts um, doing the cabbage patch and the molly whop, whatever the hell. She did the snake. Yeah, that's the snake. <laughs> she 
here, she's sitting here pretending like she's fine watching her husband hug Kiki. And then when Stormy point blank asks her, are you okay? She says what? Passing out the cards. I she said, oh, I'm good with everybody. I get along with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she's letting us know in the scene she has a problem with Kiki, but she doesn't say it to Kimmy in the scene. So, And yep, why do we think I, that is? Why? Because she doesn't want Kimmy to know that she is bothered by the rumors that her husband is slinging his dangling yet again. Okay. I totally agree. That's I totally agree that there that he believes that there's some truth to it. That she doesn't. But I also believe. Mm -hmm. I also believe, from what we saw in that scene, from Marceau, dapping it up with uh, with Amin, mm -hmm. and saying and saying hello to Kiki. He gave no indication that there was a problem, right? Tisha hugging Amin, no indication that there was a problem, right? That was a last minute decision for Tisha. Last minute decision for Tisha. Marceau had no clue it was coming. We blamed Marceau last mm -hmm. time. We blamed Marceau last time, but you know what? He had no clue it was coming. It he sat coming. there and was like, what? He followed okay, him. I'm going to go with it. Yep. Because he doesn't have any, he, do, he wasn't going to lose anything. He mm -hmm. was when I said he was smoking a cigar like Bill Clinton, I would I meant it like this man is happy. He's happy because he's like Tisha is Tisha is is taking up for me. Tisha's doing what she's supposed to for me, and I didn't have to ask her. That was his pride moment. He had gotten Tisha. He he didn't operated Tisha that battery in Tisha's back just right that morning, and got her to to do what she was going to do on <laughs> her own. Okay. Mm -hmm. Control. He was like, baby, I didn't even have to say nothing. Tisha already knew. She kicked in the gear for me. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that she wanted to. I'm just saying, truthfully, I, oh, I think that was I think that was a real reaction for her. I think she was like, nope, can't do it. I agree. It was an emotional response. Mm -hmm. When what we saw where Tisha was sitting there, hugs, I mean, that was her emotional response to it. She didn't even know she was gonna do it. Agreed. Really, what she saw was Marceau being cool with them. She was sitting at the table watching them be cool. Right. Because sat at the table, not even expecting anything until he until Tisha set the tone. Right. Because if you truly had a problem with her to the point where you weren't going to deal with her anymore, mm -hmm. you would have had a better plan. You would have had a better plan. And you would have told Kimmy and you would, you would have told other people and you would have had a better plan because let's face it. Every action that you take is going to have a reaction, whether that reaction is walking off, whether that reaction is ignoring it, whether that reaction is mouthing off to you, whether Clone. that reaction is throwing a drink in your face. Clone. You said it all when you say it. She didn't tell Kimmy that she didn't want her there because the truth of the matter is nothing would have stopped Tisha from saying, don't invite her. Right. She was pretending like she was unbothered by the, the story. Like, like right. They're doing right now on social media, we don't believe the rumors. We're going to pretend like all is well. She was letting Kimmy know she didn't believe anything that was being said. She further does it when she addresses Courtney. So it was always Tisha at the, in this scene. We blame Marceau saying that Marceau was the one who did it. It wasn't him. It was her. It was so her. Let's move to the next scene. Um, Kimmy. So this was one of the, they tried to lighten it up. Production tried to lighten it up a little bit after we get this heavy moment with the family uh, at war. Um, Jalen drives this new truck, this new Jeep to the backyard. Kimmy's in here like, who's that? Because she didn't recognize it. But then she sees Jalen in there. She said, I know that's for me. And she jumps up, runs over and gets in her truck. They have this little cutesy moment. Okay, now let's get to the table. Now we have this round table discussion, right? Mm -hmm. I like to pay attention to everyone's facial expressions. Marceau is still full of shit. He's still full of himself, smoking a cigar, talking about how she's a liar, referring to Kiki. Kiki's a liar. Everybody's, everybody, Kiki, everybody's lying except for Kiki is how he says it. The police is lying. Uh, the, the Crime Stopper report is lying. He goes on to say, I'm lying. You know, we're lying, excuse me, about her still being on that stuff. 
Everybody except for me. You know what? I jumped ahead. My bad. Let's start with Courtney, child. Let me give Courtney her props. Courtney walks in. Also, Tiffany walks in with Baby Ace, okay? Let me put Baby Ace, Baby Ace up real quick with his adorable self. My goodness, that is a beautiful baby. Mm -hmm. and we have uh, Miss Mae West herself, 2023 Courtney, okay? If y'all ever saw a Mae West movie, you know what I'm talking about. Anywho, these two uh, are the next to arrive at the party. Uh, when Courtney comes in, they basically start telling her, you just missed your cousin acting a fool, right? Mm -hmm. and she what happened? And Tisha says, well, she's trying to accuse my husband of more BS and da, 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 da. And Courtney says, where there are rumors out there. <laughs> So if Tisha had a problem with Kiki bringing it up, Courtney is the next to say, well, Tisha, damn, there is a lot of rumors out there right now. Have you heard them? Like she's about to say it. But before she can get all of the sentence out of her mouth, Tisha said, there's been rumors about my husband for five years. Who cares? I'm tired of it. I'm not listening to that BS. So now she's letting Courtney know, don't do that. Don't bring that shit up here. I don't want to hear it, right? Then we have this conversation with Marceau and Tisha further disparaging Kiki um, and making it seem like she's a liar, she's a thief, and she could possibly, you know, even kill you. Tisha said, ain't that what our, ma our grandma used to say? Mm -hmm. they lie to you, they'll steal from you. If they steal from you, they'll kill you, okay? So don't, don't hang around anybody like that. But she's literally elbow to elbow with the, with the enemy. He's a liar. <laughs> He's stealing a whole lot of stuff from her. In particular, her spirit. Because you can't get that back the way you wanted to, okay? Mm -hmm. She's robbing you of your, of your spirit, child. And once your spirit is gone, you, you're gone. You are a shell walking the planet. If you get to walk the planet. OK, um, but yeah, she's saying it and it's irony when she's saying it, because I know there's a lot of people there who look at how everybody's looking, but everybody's there probably thinking, well, damn, child. Uh, Martel had already said when he did that um, nightcap with the king, he feels bad for Tisha because when she finally comes to grips with all the shit that Marceau's done to her, it's going to take her out. I'll never forget Martel saying that. OK, but mm -hmm. anyway. They're at the table having this discussion and Courtney is the only one who is basically saying, look, this is not a joke. This is not funny. She said, I don't think what you're saying about her is true. And if you thought it to be true, then why would you be making, making jokes about it right now? It's not funny. We right. have to this seriously. I love my cousin. I want her to be better, but you two are operating in a, in a funny ass way right now. And I don't like it. And you also should be careful about how you're engaging or speaking over people because the two of you have a lot of shit out there about y'all and y'all need grace too, period. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she's having this conversation with them and they're listening and that that's pretty much the full, you know, that's the, that, that's the full scene. Oh no, there's one other part. My bad. Melody asked Marceau, what did he do? What happened that made um, Amin come after him the way he did? Because Amin chases Marceau in a, in a full damn circle. And um, he said, I told her, I told him that we need to drug test her. And they're shocked. Melody shocked. She was like, I didn't hear you say that. She said, no, you didn't. Seriously? Um, also, Courtney says it too. And then Marceau just goes into this whole, you know, I'm full of myself. I used to pick her up at two in the morning on the street. I used to have endless conversations with her for hours, five hours at a time. When her husband abandoned her, when her mother abandoned her. And when he's saying this, Tisha's eyes are looking at the table. Which I found odd. I found that whole situation odd for a couple of reasons. One, I thought if anyone was going to be making that statement, why wouldn't it be Tisha? Why is Marceau going to pick up his wife's cousin at two o'clock in the morning? 
Why is Marceau having endless conversations with his wife's cousin about it? Why wouldn't Tisha be having those conversations? That was one. Not that Marceau can't. I'm not saying that at all. I'm <laughs> saying that she didn't chime in. She didn't even confirm it. Nope. So I yeah. thought that was odd. I thought that was odd. And two, I never got the impression that Kiki and Marceau was all that close from Kiki's perspective. So hearing Kiki talk about Marceau and how they don't get along and all of that stuff, I never got it. Now, listen, if that is a, if Mar if what Marceau is speaking is a, tr a true statement and he's, he's genuinely frustrated, then I, I, I'm going to say, I understand, I get it. I won't even say I understand it. I'll just say, I get it. I get it from his perspective of that's truly what he believes. But I, I don't know. I kind of, you felt like it was a lie. I felt like it was a lie. Okay. I felt like it was a lie. And I'm going to tell you what I thought. I said uh, when, when he was saying it, I was like, but nobody sees you as that guy, Marceau. Nobody mm -mm. sees you as the type of person who picks up anybody when they're down. You're the I told you so kind of person. And it, you're not rooting for her to be healthy now. I can't imagine you were rooting for her to be healthy then, but he tries to act like he's the fed up family member, like you said, and Tisha doesn't say a word and Tisha and Courtney, they're, they're showing Courtney's face and Courtney's like, what the, f like, right. I, I don't hear anything from Maurice. I don't hear anything from, I don't hear anything from people that know him that can vouch for the story. Especially since there's been things that's come out about Marceau's own family and they're like, uh, yeah, he is a lousy mother effer. He doesn't help anybody with anything. That is his reputation. So for him to stand on Kiki's downfall and make it seem like he, you know, he's this genuine guy that only wants to help in this moment, especially since we didn't see it with anything else. We didn't even get to see it with um, Melody and Martel when they were going through their stuff. So it's we just nobody in the audience believes it. So that was the you 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 hit the head on the, uh, hit the nail on the head with that one. But while he's going through this whole thing, like he's making these jokes, um, the makeup didn't tell her makeup didn't tell you that she was on something uh, when she showed up here today. You know, mm -hmm. all that a lot of deflecting, right? A lot of deflecting. We get Stormy, who's like, listen, she's in recovery, and this is this is some bullshit. So now Stormy's piping up for her, right? Mm -hmm. We have Tiffany on the side saying, uh, listen, you know, Kiki doesn't have anything to lose. Like Kiki, why is Kiki got to be the bum of the group? Yeah, I, I didn't understand that statement. Kiki has a whole family. Right. It was a dirty dog thing to say by Tiffany. Mm -hmm. but she it. Um, and Stormy's like, listen, she's in recovery. I don't believe y'all. And that's when Marceau says, have you ever seen anybody? Stormy, who do you know? And she was like, my best friend. And she used to live with me. And why isn't she living with you now? Stormy breaks down. She gets up, walks off. Courtney follows behind her. The Fletchers follow behind um, uh, Courtney and them. They all, you know, have a powwow in the front. Because Stormy's like, I got to go. Okay, but before she leaves, I did hear her say to her husband, you want me to get you a plate? He was like, no, nah, shit, I, I ate. But <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Okay, so we get in the car and be cool. But, you know, Marceau is most of the time insensitive. He goes over, he does apologize to Stormy in this moment, though, and just says, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't realize it was a trigger for you. But all of the stuff you were saying was a trigger for a lot of people, not just um, the people at the table, but also a lot of viewers found it to be a trigger. I do have to say that I, I believe that Courtney was the balance and we just a lot of people, I, even though I talked about it a little bit in my live yesterday, people may not have paid attention to what she contributed in that scene. And that is exactly why she is your Abby for this, this episode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then we got two short scenes. We got the fellas um, who basically rehash what happened at the picnic. Um, and Courtney said, listen, Marceau has a mouth on him and it is what it is. And he better, you know, watch himself because somebody about to make it real for him. OK, uh, they all laugh and check it up. Um, what else happened? Uh, they did this light moment where they said um, both Courtney and Chris Fletcher are from the same little town, I guess, in Alabama. And it's possible they could be related because it was only like 3000 people there. So they are doing some sort of ancestry test or DNA test to see 
if they are related because Stormy truly believe they look alike. Now I can't see it. Not that both of them aren't, you know, handsome guys, but I just can't, I couldn't see it when they put them side by side. They actually made Chris Fletcher look crazy in that side by side. <laughs> <laughs> they made Chris Fletcher look crazy. He did make him look a little crazy. His eyes were a little weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't take a picture of that so I can show y'all. But anywho, that's what happened. They you were in the same colored suits. They were wearing the same color suits. That's it. Do you, you remember anything else that happened? I think the unaired footage was actually better than what we saw here. I don't think anything else that happened. I do want to point out something too that I already said, but I want to, I want to hit it home a little bit harder. Okay. <laughs> I want to hit it home a little bit harder. Okay. I mentioned earlier that I said, I believe that, that Tisha is really hurt. And I believe that Kiki is really hurt. Now we already know that Kiki is really hurt and Kiki even admits it, right? She admits it in the second part. Mm -hmm. I think that Tisha knows that these root, there's some validity to these rumors mm -hmm. that are going around. And I, I think that she has got it in her mind that, you know, she doesn't want anybody else to know because it's pretty telling that you did not tell your sister-in-law that, that, that uh, Marceau did not tell his brother, hey, this is what's going on between us, right? Or this is what's going on out there. Hey, this is, you know, there might be some, might be some little smoke between these two because they're not getting along. You know how women are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just surprised that they haven't said any of those things. And the more she keeps tight lipped about it, the more it's telling to me that she knows that there's some, some truth to it. Okay. Which I is why she keeps telling people to shut up, mm -hmm. which is why when Kiki was, was saying what she was saying to Tiffany in um, last week's episode, um, you could kind of see, you could see Tisha's entire everything kind of just going down, down, down as the camera keeps panning towards her. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want, she doesn't want anybody to say anything else because she doesn't want to have to unhear it. She doesn't, she can't unhear it. You're right. I agree. I think that the whole point was that Tisha didn't want anyone to talk about it because mm -hmm. it makes her um, fantasy world. Um, it pokes holes into her fantasy world. Tisha it is in a fantasy world period. It's a uh, knife to the gut. That's what it feels like. This is again mm -hmm. my opinion, but I think Keisha, Keisha looks at where she came from and where she is right now. And when Marceau makes a comment, she's uh, that Kiki wants your life. That's him saying, I took you out of whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. I took you out of that small town um, where you could have been nothing, you know, walking around right now on the rocks with no shoes on, like right. giving her this crap. Like, mm -hmm. Or nobody before you met me now, I didn't put you in a place where you don't have to work and all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. she keeps on saying, my man, my man, my man. But anyway, right. Right, uh, there is one other scene here where uh, Martel is telling Courtney that he should not have allowed Stormy to call Mar Marceau a bitch. Um, that yeah. was talked about at the table. And basically the conversation was that women do and say things to men, especially when they have their partners with them in order to provoke their partner and the men they have a problem with into a, a fight or an argument. Um, so that was a conversation that was ahead at the table and it's not really worth rehashing, but Martel tells Courtney, yeah, you, you have to admit she was wrong. And Courtney said, no, nah, she was right. <laughs> Stormy said she was right. She yes. was like, yeah, I mean, you can say that I shouldn't call you a bitch, but you know. You're sassy. You're sassy. You're always throwing shade. You're, you're acting like a bitch. Exactly. So that's what I, that's why I equate you to one. Right. She she said she said, and he has a level of sassiness that I've never seen in a man before. So I'm okay with calling him that. Um, if that's not what he wants, that's too bad. I mean, it is what it I is. I thought that was actually very funny. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. But that was that scene. And then the last scene is Melody. Kiki and I mean, and again, we talked a little bit about the unaired footage earlier, but basically the scene was the scene. Kiki is moving her and her husband right out of storage and they're getting their stuff. Melody calls and said, can I, you know, can I stop by where you are? Drop your location. And she pulls up with a, um, a drug test in the car. We'll get to see what happens next week. Um, but she pulls up with a drug test in the car and she said, girl, um, listen, I think you're hurt. I think there's more to it than what we see. Um, 
Kiki admits, I'm hurt. Listen, I would have never done what I did if it wasn't for Tisha. Um, and then I also want to point this point this out because both Amin and Marceau said, for as much as these two ladies, their wives, say they're never going to talk to the other one again, they always do. Amin says it in the scene when she was like, I'm done with Tisha. He was like, we'll see, because you've said this plenty of times. Mm -hmm. And Tisha, Tisha and Marceau's confessional, um, Tisha was like, I'm done with Kiki. And, and Marceau says the same thing. Oh, we'll see. Because we've been through this. We've been on this road before. I know how you are. So for whatever reason, um, even if people don't, you know, they, they don't like Tisha, there is something between Kiki mm -hmm. and that draws them back to each other. Right now, though, there is a lot of outside noise. Their mothers, you know, um, I shouldn't say their mothers, but mamas have been on live talking crazy about, about you know, the children. And then we have the audience, <laughs> the viewing audience who have had a lot to say. So we'll see what happens next. But these two, despite the fact that they've fought each other for many a times, many a years, they've always found their way back into each other's company. So we'll see what happens next, next week. But um, did you have anything else you wanted to add, child? Did you leave me? Sorry, I was talking with my, <laughs> I was muted. Um, I, no, I think we hit all the points. You hit all the I points. think we hit all the points that we wanted to hit. I'm sure there's a lot more that we could have hit. But like I said, these these episodes have been so jam-packed that it would take us hours to dismantle some of this stuff. Facts. It's very layered. Mm -hmm. You are, um, you've been amazing as always. Okay, I appreciate you. Can't wait to see what happens next week. Episode mm -hmm. three. Um, and we'll see what happens. Okay, girl. All right, sounds good. All right. Good night. Good night. I'll talk to you guys. Go ahead with that like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Talk to me in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to watch my live. It was amazing. An amazing panel. Uh, I actually did it on Saturday night as opposed to, you know, Monday. Um, I'll probably do the other one Saturday night too. We'll see. But anywho, talk to me and I will see you on the next one.